Personal safety in the Philippines. Um, I seem to believe mention something about self-defense. I wouldn't go down that route if you could help it. Um, the amount of firearms and knives and stuff in the Philippines, it's likely to spook somebody um, if you try and assaulted them, if, if you ever got in that situation. Um, I would say more shootings are caused by people panicking than actually intentionally harming somebody. So if somebody says, oh, well, a bit of uh, self-defense, I... But personally, I just wouldn't entertain it. What I would actually turn around and do is proactively not get yourself in those situations in the first place. Um, always work, wondering in places where it's late. Try not to go out late at night if you can help it. Although, um, generally, you can keep yourself pretty safe in the Philippines. Um, the big problem you have is a false sense of security sometimes. I mean, I, I do it. I go at the market at 3 a.m., um, have a few drinks with the guys down there. The police don't even go in there. They don't like that area. <laughs> they find it quite dangerous. So, you know, sometimes I do stuff that I shouldn't do as such, but I still do it. Um, but for the majority of people... They're not going to f fall foul of anything as long as it's they're doing a bit of common sense. When you leave the shopping malls, for example, get a taxi. You know, if it's late at night, get a taxi. Don't get a jeepney. Jeepneys are getting robbed on a regular basis. Um, I know some people say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a bit of scary. There's not real statistics. This is the problem. The, the chances of it happening are a lot higher than they used to be. Uh, purely based on the number of people that I know in Cebu that have had a robbery on the uh, jeepneys in the last few years. Because prior to that, it was hardly anybody. Now, probably 20 people um, in the last two, three years. That's a lot. That's a big jump from zero to to around 20 people. So statistics-wise, it's increased the risk. Um, the same as there's been these little police stations open up because of the increase in robberies on jeepneys. So with that, you just got to bear in mind that at night, just take a taxi. It's, I mean, it's a few hundred pesos, whatever, to get home. It's just not worth the aggravation. Um, and where you stay, um, I recommend if you're staying in the Philippines, get someone get something with steel bars in the windows. Generally, most places do. Every property we have has got steel bars on the windows for security. Uh, security grills are normal. And um, if you're going to get a problem, it's going to be somebody probably trying to break into your house to rob the place. This is why security lights are good and guard dogs can be, but the problem with dogs is they poison them. Um, so... It, I'd be a bit cautious with getting a dog for security. I would nip down to um, Cube. If you go to cube.com.ph, you can get a CCTV system uh, for quite cheap money um, that could cover your, your property. We found a few things when we off our CCTV um, from people stealing chickens to the dog being bit by a snake um, to some of the street kids um, I th they stole something last time. It wasn't from us, though. It's from somewhere else. It's just that they asked if we could have a look at our CCTV to see who it was at that time of day. Um, CCTV is quite good these days. All these things are about prevention. Now, this is why I say prevention, because a bit of martial arts and stuff. You do not know what these people are carrying. You don't know how many of them there are. If somebody spooked in their own neighborhood, the whole neighborhood could be a problem. But generally, I find if you're on the right side of people, you have no problems. Every bank has at least two, three security guards that are fully armed. You've normally got pistols and pump action shotguns. You go to the mall. Every mall's got at least 10 armed guards, pump action shotguns, um, plus pistols, armored cars, AK-47s, M4 carbines. There is a lot of people around with firearms. So predominantly, if you're in going shopping mall, hotel, whatever, you know the worst person you're going to bump into is a pickpocket because they don't want to be seen by any of these guards or stuff that, where you 
may actually have befriended a guard, which is one of the things I always do, and I highly recommend doing it. Guards see people coming in and out of places all day. Half of them don't give them any respect, so saying thank you and stuff, they appreciate it. Because they remember you. It's the same as, you know, we buy them a bottle of Coke or something. If you, you know, they see the guy who's been sat outside for a couple of hours. All these things are appreciated. You get a bit of respect. Um, but generally, safety is not really an issue from a robbery side. Um, unless you're in a jeepney. Unless you're in an area that is notorious for it. And most people will be able to tell you the areas to avoid anyway. There is a, a bit of paranoia in the Philippines where everyone's scared of the next area. Um, it's, it makes it very hard to actually work out if something is dangerous or not, or just a presumed that it's dangerous. Because you'll hear of entire islands and areas that poison people, or there are witches, and there's, there's all sorts of weird stuff. Um, I mean, like Naga, uh, which is just south of us, um, Minganilia, then you, the next town is Naga. It's famous for whack wax. Whack wax are a type of uh, witch. And there's, oh yeah, there's whack wax there. And it's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so there is, because superstition is still alive and well in the Philippines, there's been people killed over superstition. Key elements here don't get involved in religions. Um, you know, don't start arguing with people over a religion. I have a bit of banter with people, um, but generally it's a discussion ar around the problems within a certain group of people rather than the religion itself. Don't get involved in politics. And that also means don't stand anywhere near anybody that's politically associated because at election times there is a potential risk of shootings, bombings, and other bits and pieces. And although this is unlikely to happen where I live, I don't know where you're going. <laughs> so I'm just saying, just be aware of this. Um, will Filipinos help you? If you were in a neighborhood and it was night and everybody's all in their houses and it's complete darkness, etc., they will not come out and help you. If you were stabbed or something, very unlikely somebody will assist you because um, they're worried about being attacked themselves. So they will ignore your screams and shouting and everything else. If you're in a built-up area and under attack with somebody, very likely people will attend and assist you. It all depends who's attacking you. If it's a local um, drug addict or something, very likely somebody will help you, maybe a old woman with a frying pan or something, or... If it's, well, I'd say it's more like a bolo. A bolo is like a machete. <laughs> but it's more likely that somebody will help you if it's, they see something a bit uh, untoward outside their store or whatever. They are very likely to intervene. People are generally nice. I've had it in Cebu where my GP, uh, which is the local Jeep, um, there was a problem with the alternator went on it, and it, it just died. No power, no nothing. And these are the guys that you'll see come up with. They sell Coke, cigarettes, whatever, at traffic lights and stuff all day. They come in and they help fix the car. Didn't rob me, didn't, you know, bear in mind that I was stuck. You know, I'm there with a the vehicle, and... I can't do anything. I've got some money on me. I'm, I'm not wandering around with all the cash on me. But, for example, my watch on my arm was worth over 25,000 pesos. So there are certain things where people will help you. Don't assume everyone's going to rip you up. Yeah, I generally find the poorer people actually the nicer people. Where you have problems is normally the ones with the false face. They're the ones that pretend to be rich, etc. They're normally the worst people to deal with because <laughs> uh, they've got false face and they've often got to where they are now uh, by abusing friendships and other bits and pieces so I would say they're the worst ones to deal with the poor fantastic people they'll do whatever they can they're quite they're, they're like really happy to your friend you're they're happy you're talking to them um, most of the people I know are all fantastic people. If I if I said I needed something doing, somebody would do it. You know, if it was two hours out of the way, they would do it. 
I mean, when we went over to Morbol and our multi cab that caught fire because it had some electrics done on it, and basically the I think it was the clutch cable it was touching a cable off the battery somewhere some some local wiring should we say and it shorted against the chassis and it started a fire underneath and caused problems um they brought a, a mechanic um to the vehicle and i bear in mind this is out in the middle of nowhere this is like um up on the the hills um this guy come out and he fixed it and I mean my father and mother-in-law were coming as well it was a full day out we were all going out so we had the two vehicles we had the jeep and I think it was about another 14 people with us so we ended up with about 14 people in the GP and my mother and father-in-law stopped with the uh, multi-cab got it running and then caught up with us but that's that's the way people are so the potential risks are pretty zero um, for the average expat now what about the kidnappings Kidnappings are rarely by mistake or uh, by accident. You're normally finding a lot of people involved with activities which are prone to having problems like mining, um, political agenda. The, there's normally something behind it or they're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, I mean, there were some missionaries taken a few times. Now, they're, they're normally in the wrong location. They're, they're just in the wrong location. Uh, but you'll see a lot of people are kidnapped, and then it never comes with the full story because you'll find out that they've been working at the mines, they've been doing X, Y, Z, because the Philippines has got gold, it's got silver, it's got copper, it's got natural gas offshore, it's got a lot of resources and there's a lot of activity that you don't hear much of. Um, all those sort of things get involved with the kidnappings. There's, it's just not worth the hassles. Um, that's why I would say for the average person, the risks are pretty low. Um, just have a good companion with you, somebody that knows the area and stuff, and they'll pretty much look after you. And you'll find, because, like, say you meet, meet a girl and you're going with them, you go with them, and their entire family will look after you as well. Now, you may find that, oh, well, I'm a bit worried about I don't really want to uh, commit to this relationship. Be honest. Just say, look, I'm here on holiday. We'll just see how it goes, whatever, but I don't want to commit to anything. And give that stand back at day one, because that way everybody understands each other. Um, it doesn't put anybody in the wrong position um, where assumptions are made because <laughs> assumptions are always dangerous. All right, thanks for watching.